What is up, brothers and sisters? It's Jay Campbell, and you're listening to the Jay Campbell Podcast. Join me for regular deep dives with amazing beings whose work is manifesting a golden age. And remember, you create your reality by your focused thoughts, conscious words, and intentional actions. Raise your vibration to optimize your love creation. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? Don't ever wait for your doctor to order blood tests. With Private MD Labs, you can get your blood test prescription online in under one minute and go directly to over 4,000 lab locations in the United States. They offer every blood test imaginable at affordable prices with highly accurate results from tried and true state-of-the-art blood testing diagnostics. In fact, I've been using Private MD Labs for more than a decade. Their blood tests are much more in-depth and accurate than any at-home pinprick or worthless saliva test. Skip the intrusive doctor questions and get the exact tests that I recommend. Be proactive and get your panels today. Go to privatemdlabs.com forward slash JC to take 15% off your order. Send you guys love and light. Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you may be around the world, I am Jay Campbell and you are watching the Jay Campbell podcast. And I have an absolutely special episode here today. Uh, I am joined in my, of course, StreamYard virtual studio with Dr. Udu Erasmus, who is to me an absolute legend in the field of health optimization. Um, Dr. Erasmus, man, it is an honor to have you here today. How are you? Thank you. I'm, I'm very well. Yes, you are. So uh, let me just give a little bit of a background. Uh, in my 20s, when I first got into walking the, well, again, I like to call the health optimization path, the anti-sick care path that I've been traversing, uh, he was one of the first people that I really got deep into understanding and awareness of. You know, His books are absolutely still to this day profound on teaching people the values of essential fatty acids. And then, of course, he created his world-renowned formulation called Udu's Oil, which is still in my refrigerator to this day, okay, downstairs. I hope some of it's also in your body. (laughs) Oh, there's plenty of that. Even my daughters are using it. But uh, again, it's an honor for me to actually be able to converse with you, as I told you off air, you know, when I saw your podcast company, you know, send me a thing, Dr. Erasmus, I was like, Udu Erasmus? And it's again, so I'm, I'm having a fanboy moment. Thank you so much for coming on the Jay Campbell podcast. I, I do have to say for my listeners, which is even more profound is that Dr. Erasmus talks about the same things that I talk about now, which is consciousness and love and enhancing collective vibration and all of that stuff. So today's podcast is going to be unbelievable. And also it's unscripted because all of his amazing notes that I should have in my hand right now. I don't. So him and I are going to ad lib this and it's going to be profoundly amazing. So Dr. Erasmus, today is November 30th, Tuesday, the last day of November of 2021. Uh, And I, as I do with most of my guests, I kind of like to just get their thoughts and their feedback on like what is happening on planet earth right now, in your opinion. Okay. Well, first of all, November 30th is my grandson's birthday. So he's five today. That's awesome. That's Happy the, birthday. That's that's the really important part. Uh, yeah. But but what's going on on the planet is the same thing that's been going on for 200,000 years, which is we come into the world with the potential that all the masters talked about. That potential lives also in us. And we live our lives completely distracted from them, from that potential. Chasing you could say chasing trinkets when when we're sitting on a gold mine. And that's and I, think, I think if there's something special about it is that we have done this now for so long that it's starting to come and bite us in the butt. So our health is not working. Our relationships are not working. Our politics is not working. And our environment is not working and it's not working because of what of the consequences of what we're doing 
because we could live different and we could we could live in wholeness and gratitude instead of living in always looking for what's missing what's missing and what's missing is what's missing is we're not paying attention to how incredibly loved we are by life that's what's missing so we're missing from our life and we're looking for everything else and the only thing we need to to find that's missing is the thing that that and we already have it all within us what's so interesting about it is we're loaded with a peace that passes all understanding that's one way that people talk about it but a peace that is the foundation of our existence and it's also the foundation of the existence of the universe so everything that goes on in the universe and everything that goes on in our lives is goes on in a framework of peace even war happens in peace the peace is everywhere it's always been everywhere everywhere always but you can be in that peace and miss it because you're not focused on the peace you're focused on an idea you're my enemy i'm going to kill you other guy says you're my enemy i'm going to kill you and so in the midst of peace they then play this game right and and we're now under pressure to straighten out because you can't we can't continue to do what we're doing and that's why all the turmoil and all the confusion when when the lockdown started my 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 little quip was if you can't go outside go inside oops right go right. inside Be, and so i could literally sit down in my living room turn off my television that's going bah, 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 always talking about it, always talking about it, always talking about it always talking about it turn off my television and just sit in a chair in the middle of my living room and just listen to how peaceful and quiet how still it was and the sound in that stillness that is the sound of life right comes from within me but it sounds like it fills the room and i guess it does in a way right and so and so and then and then you say okay yeah now you can't travel unless you have this and that okay i'll travel now if you if traveling is more important than your life then you're going to have a problem with it but you say, okay, if I can't travel, I'll just stay home. Is there something wrong with staying home? No. Can I go inside? Yes. If I can't travel across the border, can I still go inside? Yes. There's nothing that anybody can do to block my ability to experience the most incredible thing that is possible for a human being to experience. And I can experience it when I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm experiencing, I can experience it when I'm lying in bed. I experience it when I look out my window and I can experience it when there's nothing going on because it's always there because it's always running the show you know it weighs nothing life weighs nothing and it runs everything it is omnipresent in my body it is omnipotent in my body all power in my body and is everywhere present in my body running everything hundred thousand chemical reactions in every cell every second every second and i've got 60 trillion cells that's all being run and choreographed and organized and 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 directed by life and what is life life is solar energy see life is solar energy so the sun, shun, sun shines on the earth some of that sunshine hits green leaves they activate electrons and then those electrons connect together in a bond between two atoms and create a molecule and that solar energy is stored in that bond and some of those molecules become food so we eat the foods and then we break them down in our body and metabolize them and that energy that solar energy is released you know the mitochondria are involved in that it's still solar energy but now in me it's called life and that life is what loves every human being unconditionally. And that life is what is the master in every human being. And that's the master and that's the potential that all of the great masters talked about. 
And the difference between them and us was that they took it seriously and lived present to that. And we, at best, most of the time, just dabble with it. So we repeat their words, but we don't, but we don't look for where is the experience? What does it feel like to be a master? What does that feel like? Because no one ever said you can't, you can't go there. Right. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful words. You know, like, I mean, I want, I want to go a lot deeper with you. Obviously we can, um, mm -hmm. all we so, really are. Well, all we really are, I'll just call you doc is at really at base essence, we're just consciousness itself. That's what yeah. we are. Mm -hmm. But let's put it this way. Everything that can be stripped from you eventually will be stripped. Exactly. So you're going to lose your ability to focus on the surfaces of things, right? That's what your senses do. Your senses monitor energy, but just surfaces of things, right? right? They don't even monitor. Like when you see an object, you're not seeing the object. You're seeing energy. Exactly. You're seeing energy and you, you in your mind, you create the object. That's exactly right. Everything sensed is illusion. Yeah. <laughs> But it's or it's energy, energy. So sound is energy, vision is energy, feeling is energy. You know, pressure, pain, stretch, cold, hot, right? And and taste is energy, and smell is energy. So our senses monitor energy in the world in order to assess when something changes: is this friend or foe, or irrelevant? Right. And then we have to make a decision. Do I run? Do I fight? Do I embrace or do I ignore? Right? right. So, that's, so right. senses are for survival. What if you turned your senses inward and right. monitored the energy within you? Is there something to see within in the space that your body occupies? Yes, there is. If you look into the darkness inside long enough, you will discover there's light in there. And right. you are and you are that light. And there's sound in the silence. You are that sound because you are life. And then it, you go one step deeper than that because life is energy. The, the, the peace that I talked about is an awareness. It's just awareness. The ability to notice, the ability to, to monitor, the ability to witness. The ultimate observer. So when you break down, you know, your ability to monitor the environment and you break down your ability to think, because when you die, that goes bye bye. And you break down the body because the body has form. So it will lose its form. You break that down. What are you left with? Now you're left with energy and energy is still flow, although it's formless, but it's still flow. And you and you go behind that. And there's just a, an awareness, a stillness, a peace. You call it consciousness. I don't like that word so much because we we talk about political consciousness, and you know we <laughs> use it in a lot of different ways. But but the you know the awareness, the consciousness that you're talking about, it's just presence. Exactly. No content. No content. No context. Just right. presence. And that presence is everywhere. It's always been everywhere. And we, when we experience it is where our peace comes from, is when we start to feel that. That's when we feel whole. That's when we feel one. That's when we feel complete in, the, in that awareness. It's as you and I were talking about, both of us avid followers or disciples or adherents of the Dr. Hawkins, you know, it's the I. You're talking about, you're literally talking about the I. <sighs> well, uh, beyond the I is... Uh, is the it <laughs> yeah right the ever the the all and the nothing yeah and, and <laughs> we're all and we're all part of that right we and, are indeed and then and then that awareness you know they they sometimes they say when that awareness freezes it turns it into energy and when energy freezes it turns into into molecules it's an interesting way of looking at it but it's all the same right. stuff you know, it's all the same stuff. Ultimately, the the play of 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 matter, you know, comes out of comes out of that awareness, comes out of that consciousness. Right. 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 This is like everything is consciousness's play. You could say it right. that way. 
Are, are you, uh, are you I, I, I presume that you are, but are you also familiar with the works of Dr. Walter Russell? A little bit, yeah. Okay, so he has a statement, you know, that mm-hmm. essentially he's, he's agreeing with you what you're saying. I mean, what we are is, you know, energy and frequency, but standing waves and vibrating particles. Mm-hmm. Ultimately. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. If you give it physics language, that's what it would sound like. But what I'm most interested in is not to read about it. Right. But to take, but to take time for stillness. Yes. And in that yes. stillness, discover experientially. And then I can make up words. So I can write my own my own sermon about it. And right. in a way, that's what we're doing when we're talking, because this is not something I memorized. This is I'm I'm just responding out of out of the feeling. Now I did sit still before we got on air. I know you were you were I thought you were meditating when I interrupted you, so I apologize now. That's basic. No, no, that's it, it's okay. <laughs> You know, and I like to do that because I like to be present in my interviews. Yeah. And when I will be, because our senses will always take us away from ourselves. So then we see everything that's out there, but then we're missing. And you want to have an interview with you with an interview with me. And if I'm missing, what kind of interviews are going to be? So what I like to do is I like to just to take a, a minute, take a few minutes and become present in my own space. And then you and I can talk about anything that has to do with human nature and human beings and how we live in, in the world. But then talk about it from a place of an, of a, of an inner presence rather than just a head trip about the, the most recent book I read that was a bestseller or, or, or whatever, right? Or, 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 what all, or what some of the other half-baked people on this planet have said, right? Because we're all half baked, right? Because we're all works in progress. We're right? all as 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 the great Dr. Hawkins said, everything is happening exactly as it is divinely intended, always and in all ways. Yeah. I always I always default to that statement. Yeah. When the when the stress of doing overcomes the life of being. The joy of being, yeah. But you know, even that, you know, it's just like like what's which is more important, being and doing. And we're human beings. We've turned into human doings. Yeah. So we're yeah. not even true to, to be being human. And if you look at being and doing, you know, you can be without doing, but you can't mm-hmm. do without being. That's right. So obviously, being is the foundation. If you don't take time to know to 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 be. You're actually living without foundation. Hey guys, what's going on? If you're looking to level up your life from a mind, body, and spiritual perspective, join the fully optimized health private membership group today. There is no better place online to discuss hormones, peptides, fitness, fat loss, supplements, and even raising your consciousness with an elite tribe of men and women. You also get to speak to me directly every single week in the Ask Me Anything. Join today. Go to fullyoptimizedhealth.com and sign up, and I'll see and talk to you soon. I was going to say that's the great majority are living without foundation. But let me ask you, Doc, because again, this is a profound conversation that we're having. And, you know, we don't get a chance to talk like this, you know, amongst many people. There's not a lot of people that are at this level of, you know, as you call being, whether you call it consciousness, awareness. But more and more, more and more because we're pressure yes more and more but but let me ask you is there and again i this is an opinion question and i don't know if there even really is a way to know i i like to think that in the third dimension we're not designed to know that this is a course for human evolution in 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 a lot of ways but Mm -hmm. is there a you know the hermetic the great hermetics talk about the right hand path and the left hand path is there two sides to this whatever is happening right now, where again, you know, people are more about doing and they're not about being is, is there a force behind the doing this, you know, the great technology, the distractions, the things that are being contaminated, you know, the people are being, again, humans are being contaminated with from the air, from the water, from the, from the food, from the endocrine disruptors, from the, you know, the particulates that they spray in the skies, the barium, the strontium, 
I mean, is there a negative force or faction behind this in this dimension or are, is that overanalyzing it? Uh, no, there's not a negative energy because energy is just energy. Energy is just energy. Right. It is the force behind what's good and, you know, what's constructive and what's destructive. It's right. the force between what we call good and we call evil. And of course, what mm -hmm. some people call evil, other people think is good, especially when it comes to politics and terrorism, right? So so in, a, in the world of definitions, it, it could look like that. But the, but the energy that runs everything runs everything. But when that my energy, the energy that is my life, for which, so let me set it up, okay? The life has a message for my body. And it's the same message that all of the great masters had for humanity. And it's nine words. I am come not to judge, but to love. I am come not to judge, but to love. That is the essence of the master's message, whether it's Buddha or it's Christ or it's Krishna or it's Lord Ram or whoever the masters were, and there were probably a lot of them that we've never heard about, because you don't have to be famous to, uh, if you're a master, you might just be quiet and mind your own business and just talk to your neighbors, right? That is the message of life to the body. I am come not to judge, but to love. But what if you're out of touch with your life? Well, that's not the message you're going to get. You're going to, the messages you're going to get when you're out of touch with what life is saying to you, then you're going to be hearing everything else that's going around. And the other messages that are coming at you come from people who are also out of touch with that message within them. And that's right. been going on for 200,000 years. Quantum physics. So, either you're, either, so it's kind of like either you're on or you're off. Right. And everything that we... Uh, blame on certain people and try to figure out who's doing it and who's behind it and who's the real evil <laughs> black dark force behind it. Okay? They're just they're just a succession of people who got lost from the message, who got lost from them themselves, who got disconnected from themselves, and then live their life chasing reconnection, but in all the wrong places. And that is the journey, that is the human journey. The human journey begins in the womb. I call it the Buddha tank, right? Because when you're in there, everything is, done, is provided. There's no place to go. There's nothing to do. And it's relatively safe. And there's not much variety. Your senses have not been developed. You have no thoughts. You have no language. You don't know what gender you are. It's just, it's just something is growing. Something is growing in a tank. You're floating around. And sometimes you see these pictures of fetuses. They just, they just get a little smile on their face, right? And they're just hanging out. And because there's no place to go, their focus of awareness is at rest in its source, inside, in life. That's why I call it the Buddha tank. So we're actually enlightened being floating around with no, no distinctions. We've made no distinction. We are one with life. And then we come out into the world. And then the process begins of our senses going out to the world because you have to get to know the world. You have to be able to assess friend, foe, um, or, or irrelevant. So you have to learn all of that. In, in that process, we get from being connected inside but disconnected outside or present inside but absent outside to being present outside in our focus of awareness and absent inside. And that's where heartache begins. That's where heartache comes from. Heartache is your life saying to you, come home. Come home to yourself. Even a woman, woman might have triggered it or somebody who died might have triggered it or some deal that went sour might have triggered it. The trigger is all kinds of things that we chase on the outside. But the call is to come home, to bring your the focus of awareness back home inside into life, to life. 
And when we do that, we, we feel whole. And until we do that, we will always have heartache because every time something ends and everything on the outside does, then we're going to always be thrown back to our disconnection from ourselves. But we don't remember that we disconnected from ourselves. And we don't get told that much either. But I'm telling you and I'm saying to the 8 billion people on the planet, your heartache is your reminder of your disconnection, of your loss of yourselves. And it's calling you to sit still in that heartache and sit through that heartache into your wholeness and bringing, bringing your awareness back inside to the, its origin, to your being. Beautiful. Do you think that part of this, whatever this is, since you know March of 2020 is a carrying call to that very thing that you mentioned to get us to back to wholeness? Well, in, in my way, you know, of course, I have a bias because I, you know, because this is my bias, right? But I would say this, that all of the great masters, Buddha and Krishna and, and the Hindus and, the, you know, all of those masters were not able to do in several thousand years what COVID did in a matter of months worldwide, yeah. worldwide. Right. And, now we're, and now we're in a process. We can freak out about it. Or we can go apeshit about it, you know, or we can or we can be destructive or we can take sides or we can make stuff up or we can say, OK, I've just a, a timeout has just been called in the timeout. Let me examine how I'm living, what I'm doing, what is worthwhile, what has value and what needs to end. And a lot of people, and some people, you know, of course, if you're not used to that and you're busy, you have momentum going out, going out, going out, that take, gets taken away from you, oh, then, then, you, then it's tough. Until you get to the point of you recognize, wow, here's an opportunity. I actually get to do all the things I always said I wanted to do and was too busy for. Okay, of course, by choice, <laughs> right? But doing, I, doing, 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 doing. Yeah, yeah. But I, yeah, exactly. But but I but but I get to now look at what is what has value, what really has value in my life. And ultimately has to come back to life is self-fulfilling. There's only two purposes you have in life. One is you were given a gift to to unpack, and that's the gift of life. And if you're not taking time to re feel fully present in all of your being, as deep as it goes, then you're missing your primary purpose. If you take on your primary purpose and you start to feel cared for because you are, then there's a secondary purpose and the secondary purpose is help where you can. Mm -hmm. You know, because when, you know, when I was younger and I definitely knew heartache, you know, I, I had it from the war that I was born into, and I had lots. Right. I, mean, I had lots of it, right? right. And, it, and I got to a point where I couldn't shake it. This, it was there all the time. I couldn't find enough distractions, so it was there all the time. And and why, when I had heartache, it was always, what can I do that'll get me feeling taken care of? And I tried all kinds of stuff, and not, nothing ever did because this is not being taken care of by something outside. Right. This is taken care of inside by bringing my awareness home. But I didn't know that. So I was always, you know, what's in it for me? What, 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 what can I do that'll get, that'll get me done? And I, there were things that needed to be done. I wouldn't do them because I couldn't see how they would take care of me. So I left things undone. When I got to the point where I realized, oh, when my heart aches, it's just calling me home. So let me take the time, sit down, get still, go inside, see how deep I can go, see how deep into the stillness I can go, see how long I can stay there, and explore what is in the space within me that my body occupies, that I can see, that I can hear, that I can feel, that I can taste what is there in there. Let me discover that. When I started doing that, I started feeling taken care of. I felt cared for. Then I was like completely changed. Okay, where can I help? What needs to be done around here? 
And it wasn't about, I'll do it because it'll take care of me. I'll, I'll do it because it needs to be done. Because you're contributing. And then, and then how can I make the biggest splash for good that is possible for me to make in the time that I have on earth, which is like very short, maybe a hundred years, four, 14 billion years, I didn't exist. Afterwards, five billion years until the earth gets incinerated, I won't exist. Right now, this is the, this is someone, somebody said, this is the holiday. You're in the holiday right now. Make the most of enjoying your holiday, right? So, so, so when, well, when did this happen for you? I mean, I have to ask this question. Um, yeah. As far as walking this path of, yeah, you know, being pursuing, and I, I wouldn't call it enlightenment, but just you know, walking a higher, more noble pursuit. I mean, what, what yeah. led you down this path? I mean, obviously, you were suffering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I the first time I remember feeling heartache was when I was seventeen. I had just started university and my heart started aching all the time and I couldn't shake it. And then, and I'd say to say things to people and they say, don't think about it. It'll just drive you crazy. Or, you know, in my family, the deal was, why can't you just get a job like your brother? <laughs> right. <laughs> so this is, this, this is the way that they dealt with it. Right. Cause they didn't know either. No, of course. And they probably had that too, but they didn't, they ignored it. They, so they got busy on something. I couldn't do it. I, I doing, 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 doing. Yes. So I remember 17 and that started me lurking, uh, looking, what is it? What is it? And so I started listening more and then I read the prophet uh, probably a year later, two years later. Um, that was, oh, wow. that, that was like a spiritual experience for me, you know, wow. for a couple of times, of course, now and now not so much, but, but at that time it was like, wow. And then, um, but how did you find that book? How did you find that book? I was in science. I was studying biochemistry sure. and genetics, sure, sure, sure. And biology and stuff. Somebody gave me the book. I don't remember who it was. Wow. And I I read it and it was like, wow, that was so, so different. <laughs> right. But then I, you know, I got, I was in genetics. I took a year of medicine um, because I wanted to know what health is. And I learned very quickly. Medicine's about disease, not about health. <laughs> I was about to say that's the biggest but, no no but, you but can I, go down. But I didn't but I didn't know because I came of off of farm and we didn't know that. I thought it's called healthcare, isn't it called healthcare? Isn't it amazing, by the way, how that construct still exists yeah. today where all these poor kids go down that path? It's insane. Yeah. So I went to the dean and I, I said to the dean, So what is health? Because I came here to study health and we're only learning about disease. And he looked me deep in the eyes and he said, We don't know. We're working on it. That's what he said. That's what the wow. dean of math said to me. And we were also told as medical students in first year medicine that a doctor should always sound as though he knows what's going on even when he doesn't. <laughs> exactly. The lab coat God. That ended my medical career right. because, like we, because we call that lying on the farm. Right. But you and I both know that that still is a preoccupation of the majority of the medical and clinical community. It's insane. Of course. Of course. And it's, it's called healthcare and it's disease management. There's a place yeah. for disease sick management, care. but it should sick not care. be misrepresented. Yeah, right. sick care. And just like religion is sin care. Exactly. Because they don't tell you, they don't, they don't teach you how to become enlightened or lit up from within like the master. Exactly. They like everything just, is external. They, it's external. Yeah, they, they just to put rules on your soul. <laughs> we have sick care and sin care. That's like the basis care of sin care. society. No wonder it's not working. No wonder it's not working. Because if there's nothing wrong with you, then somebody's gonna find something wrong with you. But Doc, uh, how you know to the to to that to oh, those are profound statements, by yeah. the way. But mm. how do we get people who are so indoctrinated? into both of those uh let's just call it divisions of reality to find what you and i understand to be within i mean what how is that is that just going to take time is we just have to be more patient well, and, well you know what number one you don't yeah first off you don't because you yeah. but you are responsible for you finding your for way you. To. yeah that yeah. will change yeah. your energy that will mm -hmm. change your energy field some people will notice the people who need to notice will notice right and the and the second thing is that if it starts with heartache for me you know and i don't want to 
prevent my kids from having to experience heartache. Then I will hammer them with the, what I've learned through the experience. Right. And make it even more difficult for them to find it. Yeah. Exactly Nobody right. had to tell me. So it came out of my experience. So you got to wait. Things have got to be worse for people sometimes before they look for something better. And if, if America needs a war in order for people to wise up, they will, they will create that war, just like they did in Europe, just like we did in Europe. I was born in it, right? And I was six, at six years old is when I started thinking about all this kind of stuff. There must be a way that people can live in harmony, and I'm going to find out how. So that's been my driver. So, yeah, so anyway, so I had this heartache. And then I was looking, and then I got into, I had a, an LSD experience. Nice. When, when I was, uh, and, and nobody in science was using psychedelics. They were all in arts, but I had a friend who was in arts. And actually, I was working in neurological research, and Sandoz had sent 144 amples of pure Sandoz LSD wow. to to the neurological research lab. And I snitched six amples and used like a little more than half of one of those amples. It's like 60 micrograms. Wow. And and I, my friends were sitting on the couch. One look turned into an angel. The other one turned into a devil. They were just sitting there. Sure. I was rolling on the floor laughing in time to Mozart music, That's tears awesome. running, tears running down my cheeks because it struck me as so funny that everything that I was so studiously looking for in the world was all already inside of me. So that was a big opening experience, experience for me. And I was pretty tight and I was pretty shy from the war. And um, so that was a big door opener for me. Oh my God, the way I live is only one of a thousand possibilities. So how do I want to live? I actually have some choice about how I want to live. So that was really helpful for me. And then I did, I... I how old were you, by the way, when you did that? Uh, that was in 1964. So I was 22. That's 22. Awesome. That was at the beginning when, when the, the 60s happened. The counterculture, yeah. Yeah. I left university in 1968 because I felt there was something more important to do than count the hairs on the backs of fruit flies, which is what I was doing in my in my experience experiments. And um, and then I traveled and you know just looked around and got a little bit into the more the the politics of the day. The Vietnam War was going on and Kennedy got shot in 1963 and. And so that was just before, actually, my LSD experience. And, and, you know, the Black Panthers were around and there was all kinds of stuff going on, violence in the streets and, you know, and draft dodgers coming up to Canada. You know, so there was, there was a lot of social stuff going on. And I felt that there must be something socially that needs to be addressed because this is no way to live. You know, I and and you know that if you don't address it, then it'll just get worse and worse and worse and worse until you end up in a war. And right. so I was so and then and then I, in 1970, uh, well, sort of around that time, 1970. So I'm 28 at this point. So probably when I was 26, I started thinking about, you know, I have a grandfather. I never knew him. He hasn't been dead 50 years. I don't even remember his name. But there's this, there's this guy who lived 2,000 years ago. And they're still talking about this guy. And, it, and it, the question came to me, it's like, what's the difference? How come nobody mm. remembers my grandpa? But everybody remembers this guy. And so I decided there must be something there. What is it? So I read the New Testament because I didn't grow up religious. In the New Testament, in John, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's like, that's already profound. What? And But, you know, what is what is it? How profound is it? What, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> right? Because right. you don't know. You right. hear the words, and it sounds, wow, right. that's, 
but what does it mean? So I decided, and then yeah, and then it, it goes on, and then it says, and and word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. Beautiful. I mean, the hair goes up on the back of my head even That's now. Right. I'm, I'm same thing, right? Yeah, it's a higher self connection. <laughs> yeah. So so and so I I, I decided. I want to have this. This is poetry, and you can't write poetry if you ain't feeling anything, right? What was it that John was feeling that inspired him to write that as an expression of it? I want to have that feeling. I want to know what John felt. That was that was like, ta da! Right? All right, ding ding ding. A weeks later, a couple of weeks later, I thought, no, actually, forget forget john why not have the experience the master had i want to know the experience that the master had that made him able to heal that inspired the sermon on the mount you know that is is throughout that that people talked about then they're still talking about i want to have that experience i don't need to be the master i don't want to be jesus you know i, I but what was that experience because he talked about it. And the way I read the New Testament, he said that that's possible for us. And he said, if you, you know, what you've done to one of the least of these that you have done to me. Well, the only way that could make sense to me was if I'm in everyone. Right. Exactly. Right? Unity. Mm -hmm. And so I, so, I, so I was doing that and I was taking little parts of the New Testament, putting them to... The, to the test, had some incredible experiences, hitchhiked around the pro, uh, the province, uh, broke for like a whole summer, and just incredible experiences, just magic, magical experiences. And uh, and then um, I, I decided I would hang out with some Christian people because my, my assumption was they're looking for the same thing. They weren't going to find out you know, so maybe I'll learn something from them and they'll learn something from me just sharing our experiences. So I walked into this place that they invited people to and uh, sat down and this guy swooped next to me. And I said to him, I didn't introduce myself. I just said, gee, it must be possible to see God and live. Because I was like, there's another one of those, right? It's like, you know, because we were told when we were kids, if you see God, you die. Why? Why, why can't you live in the presence of God? Wouldn't that be like a really cool deal, right? If you're supposed to be living for him. So this guy went ballistic. He, he just said, you're from the devil. You're from the Antichrist. Get out of here. So That's he, came, awesome. he threw me out. I went, I'm sitting, standing on the sidewalk. I was like, I am so just, just, I am so confused, so desperate. Unbelievable, you know, because I was there totally open hearted, trying to understand, really yeah. sincere. And what I used to do is I used to go out in nature whenever I got confused to clear my head. So off I went to nature, slept on a beach for a couple of days for a weekend. And I was very sincere. I really wanted to know. I really wanted to know. And so I fell asleep in this little place, plastic place that somebody had drawn over some logs. That was my dwelling for the night. And I fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, I woke bolt upright. And there was this being made of light. Couldn't tell if it was male or female. Couldn't tell if it was old or young, but made of light and human. Embodying a message, but not saying anything and no labels, on, you know. But I could put words to the, to the, to the message that this being embodied and I don't know how, how what that pro, how that process is, but that's where that comes from. I am come not to judge, but to love. That was the message. And my confusion and my and my desperation instantly evaporated. And I have never had a question since that night. How old were you? Of what was the message of the masters to humanity? And then over time recognize, oh, yeah, well, that's the message of life to your body, too. I was how 28. Old how old were you? I was 28 at that point. Wow. That was in 1970. One and then before I was born. <laughs> yeah. And then, 
And then uh, that was, I would call that my com second coming message, my second coming experience. And then you realize there was no first going, you know, there was, <laughs> no, no, it, 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 it changes, you know, it changes, you, it, it really changes the way you see the world when, when it, and then I decided I wasn't, then I, then it became a memory because I, I learned a lot from looking at this, the memory of it. Right. And then it became more and more of a memory and it became dimmer and dimmer. And it was like, man, there must be a way that you can live in that presence on a moment to moment basis. I want that. I want to be able to live my life in that presence. Of course, I don't all the time because I get distracted too, but that's what I want. Okay. And that led me to a person who said, the peace you search for in the world is within you. And I can show you how to connect to that. And then I learned a method. By that time I was 30. I was in 1972. I learned a method to bring my awareness inside and committed to taking time every day to do that. And so out of so what I'm talking about and why I'm comfortable talking about it in lots of detail is I've been basically doing this practice now for uh, almost 50 years. Next year will be 50 years. So basically, um, you know how they say 10,000 hours at something gets you mastery? Exactly. I've done almost 19,000 hours of sitting still. And so in that stillness is where all the answers are. In that stillness, yeah. you find your purpose. In that stillness are your insights. In that stillness is your wholeness. You feel the love. There is the peace. Everything that we that that we look for when we're thinking lofty, we already have packaged inside of us. So we don't have to go get it somewhere. We have to stop and shut up and sit down and get still and just relax into it, let go into it. And then we can take that when we feel it, we can take that, we can take that into the world. And, and the world improves to the, to the, <clears throat> to the direct degree to which, to the, of the number of people who are doing that more and more. Hey guys and gals, what's going on? If you're looking to use peptides, make sure you go to my number one source, Limitless Life Nootropics. For healing with BPC-157 and TB-500 or fat loss with ipamorelin, CGC-1295 and AOD-9604 to immunity with TA-1, thymus and alpha-1, Limitless has a huge selection. Go to LimitlessLifeNootropics.com and use my code J15 to take 15% off your purchase. I send you guys tremendous love and light. I really don't have any words. It's just amazing to be able to listen to you. I, I feel honored. Yeah. I'm here having this amazing conversation with you. Um, well, you know, it takes one to know one. Thank you. I, I received that. Um, <laughs> I mean, I, I have so many questions for you. <laughs> yeah. Um, like, like now in your, you know, stillness practice, mm -hmm. what, what, how, how does it look? You know, cause I know a lot of people are going to be asking me when they watch this podcast, cause I'm going to, you know, let people know no. how profound it is, but uh, what does your day look like now? I mean, again, you're almost 80, mm -hmm. but I mean, you're so calm. You're so tranquil. You've been doing 19,000 <laughs> hours of this inner work, but I mean, what does your day look like now? I still sleep very well. You know, sometimes when people get old, they have trouble sleeping. No problem at all. But why is that? Because I'm not, I don't have unresolved issues. Mm -hmm. Are you awake? Right. Uh, in the morning when I get up, that's when I do my practice. The idea, my joke is, well, when I when I wake up, I want to check in to see if I'm still there because if I'm not there anymore, there's no point getting up. That's my joke. Right? That's my joke about it. But fundamentally, I want to check in because at night when you're dreaming, your mind wanders too. I want to bring it. I want to bring it. I want to bring it home, and I want to start my day that way. And then, and then for a long time, I used to do the practice, get this incredible experience. And then, as soon as I got up, I would just leave it behind, and I would just get into the same crazy stuff I did in the world before. 
doing, 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 doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at one point it, it occurred to me, man, there must be a way to stay in this experience. You know, and sometimes, you know, sometimes I use a couple of swear words with. Great I, you, know, you were about to say it there. I was going to say it for with, you. With, with great intensity. <clears throat> and when I do that, that breaks me through habits. The intensity, right? And it was like, man, there must be a way to live in that experience, to 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 maintain that experience while I'm tripping around the world. And the moment that I I I realized that there must be a way to do that, it became easier. It's just I had never tried because it had never occurred to me that was even a possibility. Mm -hmm. So the moment I knew it was a possibility, ah, then it was like, okay, well I lost it. Okay, just go back, go back, go back. And every day, just bring it into the world a little more, a little more, a little more. Somebody ye yells at you. Sometimes you, I don't react. Sometimes I do react, you know. So, <laughs> But I have more choice now about how I, how I live into the world because I see that I can, I can live it from the power of that peace and that, that, that love, and I can just go into my head – with all of my trauma memories and accuse them of tra traumatizing me, which, you know, on occasion, I also do that, but not that much these days, certainly not like I used to. And so that's basically been my, my main uh, focus when people, people always say, how do I do that? And you, <laughs> you know, that's the that's the most often the question. I like the feeling. I get it. I want that. How do I do that? Well, it's an undoing. Exactly. See, when you say how do I do that, you're just saying I'm I'm addicted to doing. You got to break your addiction, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you got to go into being. Or people say, well, I try to do meditation, but it's really boring. <laughs> no, I say you know, fall in love with that boredom. Because what when you're bored, it means you are no longer in your doing addiction. You're not quite into the light, but you're but you're on the right track and you're going in the right direction. Fall in love with boredom. Notice how peaceful that the boredom is. So you're not far from peace. When when you experience what you call boredom, you just have a bad attitude about peace, right? right? Says there should be always something going on. There should be always something changing. You know why? Why? Mm -hmm. Why not take every moment you can when nothing is changing and don't start changing it? Just enjoy the peace when you have it. And when things are changing, deal with the changes, but don't create more changes. You know, it's so like Lao Tzu said, you know, doing should lead to non doing. You know, doing should not lead to more doing. Doing should lead to not doing. It means fix the problem, but don't just move move it around under the carpet so that every day you got to move it around some more. Actually fix the problem. Like yeah. our our medical practice is it always leads to more doing because they never fix anything. Right. It's no root cause. It's just medicate symptoms. Yeah. And then our sin management always always leads to more sin management. But if you had peace, that would take care of the sin, wouldn't it? It's like if you bring light into the darkness, the darkness disappears. Because the light is no proper in peace, Doc. <laughs> Yay! I had a war. <laughs> right? But I, I get it. Oh my God. Man. Right? It's insane. So darkness has no power. Light is the power. When you turn on the light, the darkness goes, goes disappears. Right. And light has never met darkness and darkness has never met light. You know, health has never met disease and disease has never met met health. Peace has never met sin and sin has never met peace. You know, and and the peace is within us. And the, the journey to get to that peace. Is an individual. Solitary journey you don't take your mother with you you don't take your government with you you don't take you don't take anybody with you that isn't just like death you know where you know people say oh you know he died alone everybody dies alone 
<laughs> because you go in, you go, you go inside and you go in on the internal journey of, of the the death journey, which is very like a deep meditation. The only right. difference is you don't come back. You don't come back in meditation. You come back, and in meditation, it's voluntary, and death is not voluntary. Except if you know to do the meditation, when your time comes, you, you're going to be comfortable in it because you already right. know. Me, right? So, so that's, uh, um, yeah. And then I got poisoned by pesticides. And then in trying to figure out, because the doctor said, we don't have anything for pesticide poisoning. You know, we can spray the pesticides, but when they, you get poisoned, uh, you're on your own, buddy. <laughs> right so uh i thought okay i'd use my biological background to you know i did uh, um, biochemistry and genetics sure and, and in biology you learn about health because you're studying normal functioning of normal creatures in normal situations unlike medicine where you study sickness and and you know you don't you don't learn what health is but by studying sickness you learn what sickness is by studying sickness. You want to know what health is, you have to study health. Do right. biology, do biochemistry, do genetics, do the do the biological sciences, the nature sciences. And I had the background. So I said, well, let me find out health and nutrition, disease and nutrition. That was my focus. And I found out the damage done to oils by processing. That's a whole other, another one of those stories. And I decided we should make them with health in mind, and I would develop a method for making oils with health in mind. And I did put that method together. You have to because they're very, very sensitive, so you have to treat them. Uh, uh, you have to protect them from light, from oxygen, from heat. So we developed that method, very tight system to make oils under protection, so they retain their health benefits. And out of them, that came flaxseed oil. That was my first oil. But flaxseed oil is poorly balanced, and I became omega-6 deficient on it. So I ended up with dry eyes, skipped heartbeats, arthritis like pain in finger joints, thin papery skin. Fixed it with sunflower seeds that have a lot of omega-6 and no omega-3s to get the balance again. And then decided we should balance the oils better and developed a blend of oils where omega-3 and 6 are balanced, made with health in mind, in glass bottles because plastic leaches into oil quicker right. than in water. You know, and and then I and then I went into to digestion, which is basically replace the enzymes that are destroyed when you cook foods or process foods, replace the probiotics that are killed when you process or cook foods, and make sure you get enough fiber in your diet, and then your digestive system starts to work pretty much better. And then I got into uh, what is what what else what else needs attention. Greens was my next one, and then I then was then it was like, why is it that people don't put into practice all my really good information? <laughs> and I realized I realized that that as important as good information is inspiration, because when people are not inspired, making change is too hard. So right. in, inspiration became part of what I was really clear about uh, doing. And then I one day I sat down and said, what else affects health? I was like, oh my God, everything affects health. And so I decided I wanted to, to uh, turn health into a teachable field and look at all aspects of it. Awareness, life energy, inspired creativity, physical body, survival smarts, social group, environment, and big picture. So eight parts to human nature. Each one plays a different role in health. All of them need attention on a regular basis. And each one goes off in a different ways and responds to a different kind of intervention because each one is, has a different nature and a different function. And if you want to be fully healthy and live the good life, you have to give them each one its due. And so that's, where, that's what I'm working with now. Um, Basically, I have an overview book. It's called The Book on Total Sexy Health, The Eight Key Parts Designed by Nature. And so basically, I'm, I'm working more in, a, in the more holistic, uh, you know, a more total holistic setup than ever. So that's... <laughs>
I mean, honestly, I'm just sitting here listening to you. I mean, you know, I mean, if anyone hasn't told you that you are a living master, I mean, I would hope that you are aware of that. Allow well, me working, to tell you that. Definitely a work in progress. <laughs> we, all, we all are. Yeah. But you are, I mean, Doc, you're pretty amazing. I mean, I interview a lot of people and I do a lot of my own inner work, obviously. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, like I said, it's an honor just to be able to speak with you. I wish I could fly up to Vancouver tomorrow, but you know, I got to deal with all this. Oh, you got to wait until next. Week. Yeah, you got to deal. But but here's in the here's, years of that. But again, you know, here's the thing: just to 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 bring bring it back to what we say about well, you can't do that, but everything that I'm talking about, in terms of the nature of human nature. Everything that you're looking for, that you're really deep down looking for, you have. Is, in, is inside of you. And you don't need an airplane, you just need a chair. That's exactly right. And you sit in the chair and you be with yourself. And if, you're, and if your mind is going, just let it go, but don't feed it. Just keep going. Maybe following your breath is a good idea. Just keep mm -hmm. following your breathing because there are no thoughts in your breathing. Or just feel feel the sensations in your body because there are no thoughts in your body except in the cortex of your brain. And relax, let go, let go, let go. Open, open, open. How See how deeply you can let go. See how still you can become. See how long you can stay there. And you know uh, what's interesting about it? You you worry about it. What if? Well, what if I become so still that I I forget everything? No, you know what? You're just going to get nice and still, and then you got to pee. Yeah, exactly. Right. So the the needs of your body will always bring you back. So, you know, so the idea that you could do too much of it, you can't do too much. Right. You cannot become too quiet. It's not possible. In fact, there is sound in your silence, like there is light in your darkness, like there is love in your in your emptiness. So when you, you go within, how long do you normally do your meditation sessions? I mean, are they 45 minutes to 60 minutes, sometimes longer? Yeah, hour, yeah. hour two hours sometimes. Depends. And sometimes, you know, when I'm doing it, I'm just tripping, you know? Yeah. So I'm not like yeah. focused and concentrated. You know, I, you know, whatever, I have a thought and then I trip on the thought and, you know, then I come back to it and then, you know, so it's not like I am so disciplined. I just yeah. made a, but I did make a commitment to doing this because I really like th that direction. And it's of beautiful. all the knowledges of all the courses I could take, of all the things I could learn, learning more about the magnificence of being alive or being a human being there is not a better course to take it is the single most powerful most important most enjoyable course that you could ever take that anybody can ever take so and so that's why i that's why i keep doing it because i always feel better at the end Sometimes I, I, I do a practice and at the end of the practice, I think, well, I didn't experience anything, but I notice my day goes better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's not, so I, so I've gotten to the point where I realize, you know, I'm just going to, I'm doing this hell or high water. I don't care if, I don't care if I have an experience or not. I'm just going to be here. And uh, I have lots of experience <laughs> and, sometimes, and sometimes none, you know, and you don't go in with expectation. You're all, it's always a new start. Okay. Just like, I don't know. I want to know. Please show me. You know? mm -hmm. And show me what, what there is. Have, uh, last question. <clears throat> and then I'll ask, you know, how people can find you and where you want to send them to these days with all the things that you're involved in and have done and are doing. Yeah. Uh, in, in amidst your being, um, mm -hmm. have you ever experimented with plant medicine or, like the Sonoran Desert Toad 5-MeO, have you ever utilized any of those substances? Uh, yeah, uh, LSD was the first one for me. That, that's a psychedelic. Sure, and, absolutely. But I mean, yeah. anything else besides that? Yeah, and for and for about two, three years, um, 
I did mescaline and oh nice yeah and psilocybin and I I even tried uppers and downers which is te- definitely sure. not for me um, right. But the psychedelics, I, I did my share of them. I did basically everything that was around. Morning glory seeds. Uh, they, they're quite a bit like LSD. Yep, I'm familiar. Um, the, the only thing I didn't do was cocaine and heroin. Because yeah, that, that, that cost money and I, I didn't, I didn't want to, I didn't spend money on it. Yeah. Um, and, um, and ayahuasca was not around at the time. Right. So, that's a right. so I've never done ayahuasca, um, but yeah, they're you know what they they do something in the brain. They what they do is they make connections in the brain. Yes, they connect places in the brain that are not connected. Right, and because of that, they open up ways of thinking. Uh, mm-hmm. When you get in a rut, and in a rut is whenever you if you're addicted to something, whether it's working or money or sex or, or drugs or whenever you or depression or anxiety or 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 um, bad mouthing or you know whenever you're addicted to something it break it helps to break that addiction because it opens mm-hmm. up more possibilities because we get run down these tracks in our brain because we do it so often and it becomes such a well-wound track that we lose recognition of the fact that we're making choices and yes. and and psychedelics open that up just like neurolinguistic programming or scrambling can do, um, and and meditation will will also do that. Mm-hmm. Self self knowledge. It's really self knowledge practices. Um, so I yeah. So I did my share. I'm my share of that until I got to a point where I felt I was getting burned out, mm-hmm. and. I wanted to make give my body a chance to come back, and so I decided not to do any psychedelics for two years. And before that time was up, I learned to do the self knowledge practice. Met the mm-hmm. met the client. Yeah, so amazing, Doc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, again, I'm I'm profoundly moved at this show, and you know, just yeah. the opportunity for you and I to share energy. If you know, I could promote my audience now to connect with you and interact with you what would you what would be the best way for them to do that now um uh, there's a, a website called udos choice u-d-o-s choice.com that's where i talk about oils and enzymes and probiotics and a few other things that have to do with physical health and then the other one is udo erasmus just like my name.com or the udo.com t-h-e-u-d-o.com and there I have some courses and um, some, uh, my books are there. I have a book called Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill. I have a book called uh, Omega-3 Cuisine, uh, Recipes for Health and Pleasure. As far as I know, that's the only Omega-3 recipe book on the planet. And the, the recipes come from a celebrity chef by the name of Alan Rettinger, who used to uh, cook for uh, presidents and industrialists and movie stars and stuff. Doers, and really? Huh? What's doers. doers, doers, yeah, yeah, doers. Uh, he's he's a uh, he's so good on <laughs> taste, taste and presentation. It's amazing. So I don't cook. Well, you are amazing. I have your book literally over in my massive canopy over here of books on the, my yeah. wall over here. I mean, I, I will tell the audience that Fats That Heal, Fats That Kill made a profound uh, change in my life. I mean, again, you know, going back 20 years or how old, ever old that book is. But I mean, I, yeah. I mean, that was at the very beginning of the Internet. In 1994. So right. At the very beginning of the Internet. And I, you know, that was when the Usenet groups and Prodigy and CompuServe and AOL, and I was in a bunch of groups. In fact, I was in a, a group with very, very seminal group with a lot of big names. Uh, it was called the Low Carb L Exercise List. And all the big, uh, you know, signatories and the names, you know, fast forward to now, you know, we were all conversing together. And I just remember going through, now, you know, now we call the keto, right? The ketogenic diet. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, we we started that, but but the ketogenic diet only works long term if you make sure you get omega three and omega six exactly in it. 
But it uh, also, for normal people, it also retards insulin metabolism if you stay in it forever. So you always want to, you know, variate and balance and adapt and stuff like that. Obviously, for people that have epilepsy and certain forms of cancer and stuff like that, you can yeah. keep them in that type of diet. But yes, for yeah. a normal person, it's not not really a long substance. Everything yeah. is about metabolic flexibility, as you know that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we didn't talk about any of the things that you and I could truly talk about at a very high <laughs> level, but what we did talk about was being. Let's yeah. put it that way. Yeah. Yeah. So God, that's, man, I, I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm also like I'm, I'm also on I'm also on YouTube and I'm on Facebook and I'm on uh, Instagram, so I'm not hard to find. Yeah. So, Man, I am uh, I'm profoundly moved from this conversation here today. Uh, I'm going to ask you when I get off air for your phone number, if you don't mind, mm -hmm. and then I will text you and you and I can keep this conversation going. But again, uh, for all of you guys out there not yeah. familiar with Dr. Erasmus, please go to his website. I like, what is, was it drudu.com? Is that no. the one? Is that the other Udo's one? What was it? Udo's Choice. Udo's Choice.com. And then of course, you know, um, all of your different sites and your various books. And again, if you're not familiar with his book, Fats the Hit, Fats the Kill, Fats the Heal, please mm -hmm. purchase that book. And and, uh, and, again, and if you want, we can uh, always come back on and talk about oils and fats. And you know, <laughs> that's just the, a waste of time, man. I only want to bring you on to talk about all consciousness, the, all, all the all the pooping iron stuff, and all the all the physical health stuff. No, the physical health stuff is good too, you know. Yeah, yeah, we have to live in these avatar bodies, don't we? <laughs> the avatar is is, is uh, responsible to take care of his body too. It's very important, and I'm glad that I had yeah. you on here to talk about that. So, again, uh, for all of the amazing people who watch the Jay Campbell podcast, support Dr. Erasmus. Go to his websites, purchase his books, and remember: raise your vibration to optimize mm -hmm. your love creation. We'll see you guys very soon. <laughs>